These days, before even the first part is manufactured for a vehicle, the vehicle itself is built again and again in cyberspace, and Ford gave us a rare glimpse of its virtual arena. Now, this is where they have a full stockpile of parts and are in the process of having all the specs of their plants put into a giant computing system. This allows those developing products to try different combinations in a virtual manner without having to physically build anything. We talked about it with Dan Heddle, who's chief engineer of Ford Vehicle Operations. How does this help you over previous ways of, uh, of developing a product? What this does for us is we're able to build the vehicle in a virtual sense long before we've built the first physical part. We can uh, design the product, bring it in and yeah, so along with the process, and we can build it together here, make sure that the product design is compatible with the process in the plant. It can be built capably with quality, with the existing operators safely, and, and uh, repeatedly every time. And we can do that before we build any physical parts. So if there's changes, we can make those changes early, where we're only dealing with digital data, uh, and we don't have any physical parts to change. So it, it saves us in uh, cost, in terms of time it takes to engineer a product, and we're able to deliver a better vehicle the first time. Then there's actually deciding how you build a vehicle. Let's transition now into a very high-tech studio where you can put on a pair of virtual reality goggles and some gloves. We skipped all the other sensors, and they can measure how good you actually are at building a car. And yes, they let me try it out. Now, first impression, it wasn't easy to put on that virtual reality helmet, especially when you wear glasses like me. And I didn't tell the Ford people that my claustrophobia was acting up a bit, as was my motion sickness. When you see these pictures right in front of you, it's very different. And for those of us not used to a virtual environment, it takes some getting used to. You only see what the sensors pick up, and that allows them to also add in some things that aren't really there. It's all part of the training and the measurement process. Now, my task was to pick up a center console and install it. And I don't really know if I could do this several hundred times a day. It gives me a new appreciation of the people who do. And part of the purpose of this exercise is to find the best way to do these repetitive tasks without causing injury or stress problems. Allison Stevenson is an internationally known specialist on ergonomics. She runs this operation for Ford. I often thought that everybody would do a job the same way. That is totally not <laughs> true. So in the past I thought, well, you know, I could take this digital human model and I can manipulate them in the computer to, to analyze this job and this installation. But what we've found is that, oh boy, tall people, short people, all approach a job very differently and their motion is actually really different. So by using this motion capture technology, we can understand the diversity of the people and analyze that small person doing the job and then the same job analyze it with a tall person so that we understand the impact on all the workers. Major automakers work together on some parts of this technology, things like developing true human models, that's something that's very expensive. Other areas more directly related to auto assembly are very tightly guarded secrets. Bottom line, virtual manufacturing saves money, reduces stress and injury for workers, and also in making the manufacturing process simpler, it can improve quality and get new vehicles launched much faster. I'm Auto Beat reporter Jeff Gilbert.